everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the program and event manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. We will be sharing session resources with you in the chat. But before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items, our code of conduct and event guidelines. First, please take a moment to review our code of conduct. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a, res a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary, remain professional and on topic. And secondly, our event guidelines. This session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. I will share the link in the chat for our YouTube channel. And if you've not been on a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now, and if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, feel free to reach out to us through social media or on Meetup. Which brings us to today's session. I'm going to bring in our speaker, Roy. And um, hi, Roy. How are you? Oh, hi. How are you? Very good. Thank you so much for joining us again at the Reactor. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. Well, take it away. OK, cool. Let's see, so um, yeah, thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, I will do a uh, tech talk on Azure Kubernetes uh, integration with Azure Key Vault. <coughs> so, let's see, uh, so a uh, little bit about me. Uh, my name is Roy Kim. I've been working with Microsoft uh, technology uh, stack and been consulting for eighteen uh, plus years. And uh, so I've been kind of, uh, my career has been through kind of like more like .NET and then SharePoint and then Azure and then and now uh, kind of focusing on Kubernetes as well. <clears throat> so yeah, but Kubernetes kind of my recent uh, passion and uh, how it works with or deployed in uh, the Azure platform. I'm also a Microsoft MVP <clears throat> and uh, awarded uh, six times and uh, just love to participate and contribute uh, in the te technology community and uh, and you know engage and kind of uh, share thoughts and ideas with uh, everyone so uh, you can check out my uh, blog at roykim.ca uh, and I post a lot of content there um, I also you can also look for my YouTube channel as well so without uh, further ado uh, let's go with the uh, presentation so uh so <clears throat> the agenda is you know covering uh azure kubernetes i'll just give you a brief overview and then uh, uh what is azure key vault and uh also a the my azure kubernetes kind of architecture and demo right and how i use this uh aks add-on called the azure key vault provider for secret store csi driver right and so and then I'll go through a kind of a, a hands-on demo, uh, just going overview of uh, how it's configured, right? Um, and then we can just end off with a simple uh, Q&A. So uh, first of all, uh, you know, uh, Azure Kubernetes and Key Vault, uh, in my experience, they go pretty hand in hand. So Azure Kubernetes service is a, you know, a, a hosting platform for uh, 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 running your container, um, you know, con uh, containerized uh, applications. And the sweet spot of it is that you can run kind of a microservices architecture and, uh, and deploy, you know, various uh, applications and carve them out uh, in different logical kind of namespaces. And uh, how I like to describe it is <clears throat> it's kind of like a, a little mini uh, or micro kind of data center, you know, where you're managing networking, um, you know, uh, uh, storage, uh, compute, uh, how things are deployed, uh, you know, uh, resiliency, etc. So uh, where uh, Key Vault comes in is that um, you know, usually you have an application where you want to store uh, sensitive information such as uh, a, a password or a secret, like a, or a, co a confidential API, uh, you know, key, right? 
so you know everyone knows key vault is where you can um you know manage uh you know sensitive information such as encryption keys uh secrets and certificates okay so um also allows for uh the management and rotation of those as well so um so the scenario where i'm gonna kind of go over is you know you have a kubernetes pod okay and in that pod you're running a containerized uh, application and that application uh needs to access uh, a, a password right that's stored in key vault okay and it's not a good practice to store uh secrets directly into uh kubernetes right um you know just uh in terms of like role-based access uh how it's managed uh etc so really the security best practice is to store them in um azure key vault now how do we get this application in kubernetes to read from the key vault and uh, yeah read from the key vault and and use that right uh and uh you know so uh, so I'll be going over, over this uh, scenario. <clears throat> so in order to uh, uh, fulfill this uh, scenario, uh, the kind of the go-to or a good, good option is to uh, enable what you call the Azure Key Vault provider for secret store uh, CSI driver, right? So it's an add-on in the uh, Kubernetes AKS that you can uh, just simply enable, and that basically deploys a bunch of uh, uh, de uh, Kubernetes deployments and pods that allows for uh, the integration, right? And the mounting of like secrets, certificates and keys, okay? So also allows for automatically, um, you know, syncing uh, the secrets uh, and, and also ro rotating them, right? Which I can talk more in, in depth. So, um, to, so you know, here's a uh, scenario or my kind of demo architecture uh, where I have a um, Azure subscription that will have the my AKS solution and the AKS uh, solution users group, which has the AKS. And this AKS uh, cluster has a, a VM scale set uh, comprised of, let's say, three, three nodes, okay? And then on the other side here, on the right, uh, you know, there's uh, a, let's say, a shared uh, key vault or enterprise key vault, okay, uh, as part of your shared services, right? So, so that's kind of one um, uh, layout architecture, but... Uh, not saying that uh, this is the uh, prescribed uh, way. Sometimes you have a key vault in the same resource group as the as the AKS cluster. Um, so uh, right here we have our key vault, and you know how do we get uh, this secret that's in the key vault um, accessible and and mounted uh, as a as a file volume in your Kubernetes uh, pod for your applications. So <clears throat> first and foremost, um, you got to enable the, um, the key vault provider add-on, which uh, deploys uh, like this uh, deployment. And there's other things right here, but for the sake of simplicity, um, I don't, I'm not including everything in this, in, this, in this diagram, but you have this uh, one example where this one running uh, uh, deployments uh, in uh, situated in the Kubernetes namespace. So, in order to enable this, uh, you you can uh, either go to the Azure portal and simply enable it, or run uh, Azure kind of CLI uh, command right as you right here, right. So, here's the add-on. Uh, see here, and then indicate the uh, Kubernetes cluster name and the the resource group. So, um, so the next thing in as part of your setup is that you need to have establish some kind of um, access from between your Kubernetes cluster and your key vault. Okay, so in my case, in this in this demo, I created a user signed uh, managed identity. 
Uh, there's uh, a, cu a couple other ways, but in, in this case, I've done um, user assigned uh, managed identity. So I create that separately. Um, that's uh, part of uh, uh, this uh, AKS solution research group. And so next, what we need to do is we need to basically assign that to the VM uh, scale set, okay? And once that's assigned, then we need to grant it uh, like base, uh, permissions. Okay, so how that's done is um, through Key Vault, uh, there's, there's a blade uh, where you can choose access policy and you create a get permission uh, on the uh, uh, secret. So next, um, you know, I would have a, you know, uh, your app, some kind of application namespace, okay? In this case, I have what I call a Keyval demo namespace. And in it, I deploy a, a pod called um, um, using the application uh, sorry, using the BusyBox uh, container image. It's a uh, very popular, very lightweight uh, doc, uh, image. And uh, I deploy that. And then <clears throat> we, uh, because you've installed the add-on, uh, there's a custom resource definition, uh, you know, which is a secret provider class. And basically in there, you have to... Uh, um, give it some configuration uh, to establish that integration, right? Uh, be between with your uh, user signed identity, giving it the key vault name, right? Uh, what tenant that key vault is in, uh, and also um, the secret that you're trying to uh, retrieve or, or mount, okay? And if you wanna uh, sync them or establish uh, Kubernetes secrets, with the key vault, the secret in the key vault, um, you have this um, uh, configuration right here as well. Next is uh, in the kind of Kubernetes pod itself, uh, you want to have uh, create a volume mount, okay? And so you establish a mount path, and right here you you know you refer to the secret provider class that was right here on the left, right? And you're leveraging that in order to actually um, uh, mount that secret as a file volume into the uh, mount path. So here, I also wanna create a environment variable, okay? That's uh, taken from the uh, Kubernetes secret, right? That's also um, uh, synced up from this, uh, the key vault secrets as well. Okay, so these are kind of the main ingredients to get everything uh, working. Um, and then, yeah, once you're on that, you get that uh, volume volume mount, okay? Um, and then once that happens, yeah, you get that examples, uh, Kubernetes secret uh, uh, created, right, within your application namespace. So, whoops, okay, so, um, so as you can see here, uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on uh, to uh, get everything set up. Um, I found that uh, it was a bit, uh, not overwhelming, but uh, I knew that there was a lot of uh, layers, uh, a lot of concepts and, um, uh, you know, uh, objects and configuration that one has to learn. So, uh, but now with this diagram, hopefully you get a good idea and I can do a deep dive into the how it's set up and how it's configured. So uh, in this demo, uh, you know, I have Kubernetes version 1.23 and I have a key vault in a different resource group. Okay, so let me, okay, before I do that, let me turn to, uh, let's see here. Uh, the Azure portal and kind of go over uh, the configuration settings that's been applied. So here's my uh, AKS uh, cluster right here. And uh, where is the go to cluster configuration? 
And we can see here that enable secret store CSI driver. Okay. And that's kind of, that's where uh, you can enable or disable it uh, through the Azure portal uh, instead of um, your Azure CLI. So that, again, that's the first thing that you got to do. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, um, let's see here, is that you need to have your uh, managed identity. Okay. So here in this case, so this is the virtual machine scale set, right, uh, of this Kubernetes cluster. So if you're curious how to go about to get, to get there, um, so you go to properties, uh, infrastructure resource group, uh, right here, that's the uh, virtual machine scale set. And we go under identities. So <clears throat> there's a system assigned, but in this case, I've created a user assigned manager, which is this one right here. So you create that, uh, take note of the client ID and object uh, principle, okay? And uh, you can see that it is associated by it being assigned to the virtual machine scale set okay so now turning over to the key vault uh, we have here let's look at the secrets so this is the um uh what i call the example secret and i can show the secret value it's uh, secret 16. okay and then in terms of access policy, right, uh, we have here, this is that user side managed identity and it has that get permission right here. So this is required uh, to uh, set up that configuration. Okay, cool. So, um, and so we have that. And then, uh, well, okay, one thing I should um, mention is that uh, this demo, I have it in my GitHub, right? So you can just go to github.com, look for, uh, you know, under my handle, and I have a pretty uh, comprehensive script, right, that I'll, I'll walk you through in, in a moment, okay? And the other thing, uh, that was a key learning uh, resource and where my and largely uh, how my uh, what inspired or took uh, learnings uh, from is this uh, Microsoft uh, uh, documentation right here that kind of walks you through uh, uh, each each step. Okay, so in my case, I kind of uh, cherry picked some steps that I felt relevant to my uh, demo uh, uh, scenario and um, and apply it in my uh, script that I have in my, my GitHub repo. So uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much, it's, uh, it's a big handful, but uh, I think it's really useful uh, to know. So, so now uh, I will turn to the, uh, let's see here, uh, the script itself. So <clears throat> I'll go through, uh, the script and how it's configured through Azure CLI. Uh, so uh, right now, you know, um, I'm in, if I go kubectl, uh, what was it, uh, you know, get uh, pods. So right now I, I'm actually in that uh, key vault demo namespace, okay? And so I have a, so that's what the uh, application pod they're using the busy box. Uh, there's this reloader uh, deployment, which I'll talk in a moment. Uh, so that's uh, what I have there. So in the script, you know, you want to start off with a uh, login, uh, establish your resource group name of your AKS cluster, your AKS uh, name, uh, your key vaults, um, the, the uh, namespace that uh, for your application that you have, 
and then you log in, right? So yeah, you know, again, assuming you already create your cluster, and here you've kind of uh, log into it basically into your cluster. Okay, uh, this command right here is you know if you want to check if that uh, add-on is uh, installed. In this case, it is. Okay, uh, here you know if you want to have a list of your key vaults. And also, uh, you know, here showing it whether a specific key vault by user group and name exists. Uh, here, as I mentioned before, how to enable that. And another way to verify that that provider is installed, uh, you're getting the uh, pods in the cube system. And so these are the pods that are supporting the key vault provider. <coughs> uh, so here um, you can create a uh, secret value in your key vault, okay? Uh, and also show, run this to show the value, which already, which already created before. And as I showed in the Azure portal is secret 16. And uh, so, yeah, this is kind of is optional. Uh, here, uh, to create that user signed uh, identity, okay, and which which already created before, okay, but uh, to configure it further, uh, you know, I like to get the uh, resource ID, client ID, and the principal, okay, because it's a managed identity, uh, there's no need to know the uh, uh, client secret. Right, because that or applies to your kind of your raw uh, service principle, right? So what we want to do here is we want to uh, assign uh, right here AZ VMSS. So that's your virtual machine scale set, providing its its name and resource group, and to uh, assign that uh, uh, user managed identity. Okay, and then here is in, at the key vault set that access policy uh, uh, so granting this uh, user sign managed identity uh, to have uh, the secret permissions of get okay that's all it needs uh, here uh, create uh, the key vault demo namespace which i already did and and then go into the context of that Okay. And uh, next is creating that secret provider class, uh, as I mentioned. And so we need to uh, uh, grab that uh, tenant ID. Okay. And it needs to be uh, uh, defined or uh, applied into your secret provider class. So uh, so basically, I create this uh, Kubernetes resource in the same uh, namespace as the my uh, the application or the BusyBox uh, pod. And the key thing is, uh, because we're using user signed identity, uh, we want to provide it the uh, client ID. Okay, give it the key vault name, and also uh, reference the actual secret that we want to mount. Okay, and also the uh, key vault tenant ID, okay? And then also uh, the uh, community secret. So uh, I, could, I could run this, uh, it's, already, it's already created, but uh, you can see just to run that, uh, it's unchanged. Uh, let's see here, cubes, let's see if we can get secrets. So we see here uh, the example secret that was uh, defined um, right right here, okay. And so now we want to use this uh, into uh, the the pod, right? So here let's go to the next uh, definition where we have um, a Kubernetes uh, pod definition and. Uh, just name it uh, busy box okay 
and we're using the uh, BusyBox container. And so the key thing here is the volume mount, okay? Uh, what is that mount path, okay? And also uh, referencing that uh, Kubernetes secret, right? That's that's defined, that's defined right there. And also uh, volume and referencing that secret provider class. Okay, so so that's how the plumbing uh, of uh, to get uh, the key vault uh, integration. So so let's take a look at uh, the pod itself. Okay, so let me let me run that. Uh, so the pod is created. And the QCTL get pods. And uh, it's this one that was created. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So, let's see. pod name. Uh, I want to put that into a variable. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I think I end up getting. Oh, okay. You know what? Okay, it's not what I wanted, but let me kind of allow me to improvise here. So, uh, pod, let me just do Harco pod name equals this, that, this. Okay. So, so now let's let's look into the pod itself, right? And look at uh, if the file exists. So we go kubectl exec into the pod okay and we want to in the pod we want to run an ls ls command so here we have that file that's great okay now we want to uh, print out uh, through the cat command in that pod um, the contents of that of that file so here we go so we have secret secret 16. So that is the value of the uh, secret in Kubernetes in the uh, sorry, key vault. So uh, let's see here. So again, just for review here, click on this and uh, show that that's that's secret 16. Hopefully you can see that. Um, <coughs> uh, the other thing is, OK, well, what about the environment variable? So again, we can uh, run the print env uh, command. So we have here uh, that uh, secret, right, and and its value. Okay, uh, here we can run the env. Okay, so okay, so I think this is uh, this this proves it enough right here. Okay, so that's uh, really a run through and implementation of. Uh, how to get that um, uh, set up, okay? Now, uh, the next scenario or sub-scenario sub you may think is, well, what if we upgrade, uh, update the, uh, the secret in Key Vault and how is that reflected, okay? So uh, one thing I like to explain is that uh, going back to... Uh, See here, uh, the key vault uh, provider uh, you, you can read here is that the the file the file mounted okay uh, is uh, automatically updated okay but the environment variable uh, is not uh, rotated uh, automatically okay so there's a section right here called enable disable rotation. <laughs> And uh, you can uh, specify a rotation pole interval, but you know through my uh, testing and experience with this is that the um, the file right is automatically updated, but not the environment variable. Okay. Now, uh, so we need another um, uh, let's say open source kind of tool to allow for the environment variable to get automatically updated. So uh, over here, uh, so for that, you can find it here at uh, reloader. 
So, so here, uh, for uh, environment variables, uh, you need to restart the pods, okay, to get the latest secret uh, as an environment variable. And so uh, in a production setting, uh, that's not really ideal. You don't want to like just restart the pod whenever a, a key vault secret is updated. But if you want to tag it automatically, uh, you would need to have <coughs> uh, go to this uh, open source project, okay? And uh, I would suggest kind of have it reviewed by your security team uh, for any kind of uh, to be kind of sanctioned and approved and uh, doesn't have vulnerabilities. So uh, here I've ran this tool, okay, into the Kubernetes uh, uh, system here. And that's where, I've already done that, where I go kubectl uh, get uh, deployments. And that's where I have reloader already set up, okay. Uh, see here and then i have a script here that kind of goes through the whole uh pro i won't go through it in detail but uh you know uh, it's you know, how to see it set up that reloader right uh and i uh, see so you can give that a look but the main point is uh uh you know, updating that uh installing this um so there's a Helm chart that I use. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to find out the, the line. Um, so here, okay, can't really hear somewhere. But anyways, <clears throat> you install the, the reloader um, application, okay, and that will help with the uh, rotation of the environment variables. So let's just go through, let's uh, go to the, uh, Let's say key back to the key vault, and let's 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 update it, right? Or like add a new version. So, um, so I go secret uh, seventeen. Say here. So I add that new version. Okay. So secret uh, seventeen. And going to yeah, okay, pause. and what you what can see is basically uh it's basically restarting the pods kind of for you in order in order for it to be uh fetched <coughs> so let's kind of let that run whoops So the old uh, pod is terminating. So what we can do is go back to here. And so let's look into the pod as well. So I'm gonna grab the name of it. Okay, and uh, so, so let's do an ls command uh, for the kind of the file that's mounted. Let's look at the contents. So that's updated, secret 17. And then if we look at the environment variables, uh, oh, oh no, okay, actually I need to, sorry, I need to, uh, exact the, the pod name here. So we see here example secret 17. Okay. So uh, one thing to note is, uh, as I showed previously here, that um, okay. Whoops, QCTL pods. So, so this is the uh, pod uh, that I created, but this this first pod is through a deployment, uh, a Kubernetes deployment. This is just a standalone pod, 
right? So that reloader um, uh, doesn't uh, actually doesn't reload uh, like kind of these standalone pod uh, uh, configurations, right? Uh, but really under uh, deployments, Kubernetes deployments, okay? Um, which is, again, I can show you if you look at deployments. And that's kind of how it's designed, right? So the reloader uh, works against um, deployments and stateful sets. Okay. So, uh, so, so basically, I've kind of gone through a rundown of uh, how uh, Kubernetes uh, secrets uh, are and environment variables in your pod is updated, along with, uh, um, uh, with you know it mounted as a file volume in your uh in your pod so uh just turning to the comment section uh is there any questions i'm happy to answer okay so let me uh, go through Okay, so to, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I pretty much, so for the reload, just to recap, right? So the reloader uh, gets deployed in my situation to the to the namespace, okay? It watches for changes for config maps and the Kubernetes secret that's here, okay? And uh, so with that, it'll it'll basically do, I, I think it'll, it just ends up doing a rollout restart of your uh, pods in a deployment. So uh, basically, I've kinda, I kind of uh, showed these already in the, my demo. And so, um, you know, speaking from experience and kind of what I see in, in the field, uh, totally encourage you to use uh, the Azure Key Vault and the uh, Azure Key Vault provider for Secret Store CSI driver in your own uh, Kubernetes cluster to manage, uh, you know, such sensitive data. I think it's... A, probably a very standard um, uh, pattern uh, from, from what I noticed. And so I think that if you're uh, just starting out with Kubernetes uh, in, in uh, Azure or just, you know, uh, or have some projects under your belt, uh, this is definitely uh, fundamental, right? It should just be uh, a pattern that you kind of uh, no, um, like one of the key learning topics you, you should you should do once you get the um, the bare bones uh, fundamentals with uh, AKS and Kubernetes. So this would be your kind of your next step up, I would say. So I uh, hope that um, uh, you know you enjoyed my presentation, my demo, and again opening up for Q and A. Uh, here are kind of like my social media as well so appreciate if you can um uh subscribe to my youtube channel i've been working really hard on that and i do have an, another like a very quick demo of that in in the in youtube as well my youtube channel Hey, I'm just jumping in. Um, thank you so much for today's session again, Roy. And uh, if you have a moment, feel free to click on the link that I just sent um, to our survey to just share your feedback, how to improve um, any sessions that you'd like to see in the future of the reactor. Feel free to drop your comments. And finally, join our community. I shared the link to our YouTube channel where this session will be available in 24 to 48 hours. And other than that, you can find us on our website, microsoftreactor.com, on Meetup, uh, Twitter. And yeah, thanks again, Roy. It looks like we're having great feedback here. Oh, awesome. Amazing. Okay, thank you, Ashok. Well, if there's, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, if there's no more questions um, in the chat. And it looks like everything was pretty clear.
Thank you so much again, Roy, and we look forward to having you again at the reactor. Okay, thank you. Have a good night, everyone. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.